This is a pretty good Christmas throwback. You can see there it's got three green balls all the way up to the tip up there. So it fruits pretty good and um, it uh, it's a lighter color green. It's not as dark as one of the parents. So it may be an interesting keeper. We'll see. We'll see what it tastes like. Garden take today. All right, I pollinated this one, and that is the squash here, and also this one. Notice the colors with the male pollen of this beautiful green that's down there. What I want to do is I want to lock in the pattern, and I hope to get a round version in the next generation with the pattern and I'll be able to select for color then. So I'm going to show you pollinating melons. Melons aren't as easy as squash. They're in the same family, Cucurbitae, but we've got a male flower here. See that? It doesn't have a baby on the end. And then over here, same plant, we have a little baby on another flower. That's what the female looks like on the inside. And this is what the male looks like on the inside. Let me see if I can block. There you go. Block that sun. So how we're going to pollinate, I've got another male here. And I'm going to use both of these males to, to gather some pollen. And we're going to pollinate that female. Let me show you. Alright, what I've got here is a little... This is a makeup brush, I believe, that my wife donated. <laughs> Don't tell her I stole her makeup brush. <laughs> It was a long time ago, so she's got more now. Anyway, we're going to take here, we're going to use this brush, and we're going to, I can't touch the flower. Um, otherwise, I'd hold the flower, and I'd rub this on here until I got some pollen. And you really can't hardly see it on this one. But then all you do is you go over to the female, and you just rub it on, just like that. And that's all there is to pollinating a melon. I'm going to show you here. This was hopefully it'll focus in. There's pollen on it now. Nice good bit of pollen. And here's what they look like a few days later. I haven't really seen any squash bugs yet, but there is a way to tell if you're checking your plants. You see that right there, those little red dots? Those are squash bug eggs. And you can take, you know, gently, let me see if I can do this with you in here. I knock them off, it may pierce the leaf. And uh, just let them hit the ground. And, um, Hopefully that'll kill them off. Also, part of preventative maintenance is to take off some of these dead leaves, dead and dying leaves like this. See, it's starting to have a little bit of an issue. And that's a potential for later on. You can see where I've done it down there. So you gotta, you gotta kinda do some maintenance if you wanna keep these things producing. Also, if you run across this, this is fruit that didn't get pollinated and that needs to be removed. Oftentimes they'll have a slight little twist will pull them right off and you don't want that on there. That's just potential uh, disease bringing in. So I'm out here at the squash. This is Madison's Cross. I've made up a batch, a doubled batch of my antifungal and I'm going to spray all the stems just from the lower part down here up to about right in here somewhere I give it I use a similar spray as an overall garden spray but this double batch I'm going ahead and I'm doing that to deter squash bugs and the squash vine borer 
So we're just going to see if that works. Matter of fact, there's a bug on there right now of some sort. So this is all I do. Just spray it up one side and down the other. If you're concerned about pollination, you can assist it. Like this year, I don't have any bees. And I want to ensure, uh, well, I'm not quite certain if wind is going to be enough. So I want to take a little extra measure. And I use this electric toothbrush in the greenhouse. So when I'm out here, uh, I'll start it and I'll just walk along here and I'll just touch these to every flower just like so. Some people will shake the plant if they need extra pollination but this is real simple. I already have it and every time I turn it on it lasts for about two minutes just like when you brush your teeth. This is our old one. We've got a newer version. That's all you do. It literally takes me about five minutes to do this one row of 25 or so plants. Just touch the flowers and walk along. Hey Jim, I'm out here at my eggplant here. I wanted to mention this. I've got what I see is uh, flea beetle damage. I actually saw a couple on there before and I'm taking that antifungal spray that I use and I'm hitting it with, with it. And it seems to be doing okay i only planted two eggplants uh, this year but it seems to be doing okay with the flea beetles i will keep you updated on that buddy a few days later on the eggplant and you can see that the uh, flea beetle damage has at least been minimized here's the one i probably showed you from before and this is all new foliage i got some munchers here but i don't think that's flea beetles but what we do have is flowers so let's go ahead and tap these with the brush and do it just like a tomato. Got one on this one too. Let me see if I can get over to it. Maybe some pollen will drop for you. Or maybe not. But anyway, that's how you do it. Same as tomatoes and peppers. I was mowing and I saw this little kill deer come right up to the mower. She was brave. She's right over there right now trying to lure me away, but this is what she's protecting. It's a kill deer. There's a beautiful sight flying around there. I have not seen them all year. And I see this sole little guy there on that butternut squash flower. <laughs> That's great. I'm out here helping the bees pollinate this little crane melon here. See the little baby back there? And I don't know if you've ever noticed, but if you're down close to the foliage of a melon, you can actually smell melon coming from the foliage. It's such a great fragrant smell. That little guy's out here and he does a much better job than I do. Much better job. Look at him in there. Working it. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. He didn't miss a flower. You know, I'm all over these squash every day. Looking, monitoring, especially afraid of the squash vine borer. But I did see one yesterday and I killed it. So uh, I sprayed last night an extra measure. I hit the stalks with my uh, what I call do-it-all mix. It's a form of the antifungal, but um, it's mixed in a gallon and I add a tablespoon of neem instead. The rest of the ingredients are about the same, but I also add uh, 10 drops of Maximum Street grapefruit seed extract. And if I see a caterpillar, I'll add spinosad. But I hit all these with that. And, well, not all of them. I left some to see if there's a difference. Uh, the Golden Glory zucchinis are definitely ones. A couple of these coals here, too. The ones that aren't producing like I'd want. Also left them to see if, you know, a comparison of the spray, if it works or not. But... All said, 
I don't see, you know, I saw the eggs, and you saw the eggs from the, from the squash bugs, but I don't see any squash bugs on here. In fact, I see little weird flying things like what's coming out of that flower there, whatever that is. And um, I'm seeing bees today, which is awesome. And I see these little ants. They're not red ants, so fire ants, which I'm allergic to, or not allergic to, but they leave a mark on me for a really long time. But no squash bugs. This whole row here is Madison's Cross and Early Prolific to make the hybrid Madison's Choice. And that's what really bothers me about the squash vine borer because I have seed squash started. Here's one. Let me see if I can find another one for you. There's one, for example. And I have quite a few of them down through here. Now, seed squash will kill production, but that's okay. I mean, there's so much squash coming in. But, yeah, I would be devastated if the squash vine borer got every one of my plants and I wasn't able to salvage any of the seed hybrid squash for the hybrid squash Madison's Choice. Know oh, if you've seen this before, if you follow me, you, you might remember. But over the winter, I got to look at these squash, and I'm no longer pollinating them. I'm just taking and removing them now, and I'm keeping the baby squash. And that's about three to four inches there. And uh, with this many squash, if I just do that without pollinating, I should have uh, some pretty tasty meals. For example, here's four just pulled off of just a couple plants. When you get baby squash this size, smaller, three, four, five inches at most, oh man, it's really good sauteed with some onions, some sweet onions, and butter. Oh man, it's so good. I have also selfed Madison's Cross, and that's what this little ribbon's on here with the S means. It means it's selfed back to itself. The same exact male was on this on flower was the same as the exact female here. So I've got a few of those growing and they're getting good size. Here's a few babies, for example. So the flower's still quite intact. So pull the flower off, pull the squash off. Got one back here, same plant. Obviously you gotta get it before the end starts getting soft. Once the end starts getting soft, it's basically rotting. And I got one over here, two. I'm not sure. I'll go ahead and take it. What it'll do is it should speed up these others that are smaller. These first 10 plants here are lacy. It's a breeding of mine. And this is the fifth generation. And she's doing pretty good out here. This is her first field trial. She's grown, she's been grown exclusively in the greenhouse. And she's putting on fruit and flowers now. And she's getting more consistent. I'm selection selecting for a nice, small, medium, round shape. This has a great, great tomato bite, a little acidic. The way I like it, it's not tame. Not definitely not overly sweet. It's it's a great tasting tomato to me. In fact, it's my favorite uh, lately. So that's what's going on with the no fuss garden. You can see all the squash here. Hopefully they'll make it past the squash vine borer. But if they don't, this is the last time it looked good. <laughs> and uh, we're going to get rid of the golden glories that are right there. I just don't care for them. The Kavili, they may be trying to set a fruit or two now. We'll see with those. Uh, peppers and even the okra is doing great. It's got some baby okra on it. The eggplants, I've tipped those and they're starting to bush now just like I want. That's great. All the melons are doing fantastic. They're all doing fantastic. I've pollinated a bunch of babies so I expect to see some fruit popping through the foliage pretty soon. And on the back there, all those butternuts, I've got lots of baby butternuts growing to make a good selection for the next generation. Of course, that's going to depend on the taste, because with butternuts, it is all about taste. All about taste. So, that's it for the No Fuss Garden, guys. This is Brent. We'll see you later. 
Did you know you can subscribe to me? Check it out. Click right here on the subscribe button. See that? It's got a little check next to it. If you click on the little bell to the right of it, it'll bring up a little notification that says send me all notifications for the channel every time I make a video. Click save. You'll get an email notification that I have made a new video. This is for those who don't know. Thanks for watching. You guys take care.